four ultrasonic shoulder triggers, two back capacitive sensors, two pressure sensitive zones, two active turbo fans, two speakers and two batteries. This is my unboxing and extremely detailed review of the Lenovo Legion Phone 2. Pro. Prices are at the top right corner and while the Chinese version that I have with me today seems very reasonably priced, the global version known as the Legion Phone Dual 2, which is the exact same phone by the way, cost quite a bit more. We get a Type-C 2 headphone jack adapter in the box as well as a hard shell case and of course a USB Type-C to Type-C cord. We also get a 45 watt charging brick in the box, though it can charge up to 90 watts when using two of these paired together or purchasing the 90 watt block straight from Lenovo's website. That being said, it's time to unwrap the Savage Beast. This is the ultimate black color variant of the device. You can also pick it up in titanium white, which in my honest opinion looks even better than this since it's a lot less glossy. Nevertheless, this still strikes out and being black is a lot more subtle compared to the white one since you don't really notice that big back plate in the center of the device at the back there. We do have those wonderful RGB lights which are found within the dual turbo fans as well as the Legion logo at the back. It looks pretty striking from its backside but like I mentioned it is pretty glossy and it does slope in towards the middle from either side which may not sit well with some. We get a massive 5500 milliamp hour battery, 90 watt dual wire charging and you can get 65 watt charging using just one port. We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, a glass back and an aluminum frame over here and since that back is so darn glossy yes it picks up fingerprints just like a fingerprint magnet I guess would though we do get that included very I guess attractive hard shell case in the box not really it does give you some added grip when you are gaming I guess and it doesn't look too bad from the front so I guess it's gonna have to grow on me from the back we do have this purple or purple bluish accent going around the rim of the phone we do have a power button which doubles up as a selfie camera, a pop-up selfie camera that is. We have a non-split volume rock on the left-hand side. We have a USB 3.1 Type-C port on the left-hand side and one at the bottom, which is limited to 2.0 speeds. And we do have dual SIM, but no option for expandable storage over here. We do have dual front-facing stereo speakers, both paired with Dolby Atmos, which has nice balance. We'll get to that a little bit later. And we do have a quad microphone system over here, as well as that fan system on the back. We have intake coming from the bottom and exhaust going into the top. We have 29 blades on each with 12,500 RPM on the one and 15,000 on the other. So let's go ahead and have a listen to how loud they are. Other gaming things about the phone strikes the four ultrasonic shoulder triggers at the top which are pretty strangely placed and quite hard to find though they do work pretty well when you use them with one finger instead of two on each side though they're not indented like the red magic so it's hard to find and they aren't pop-up triggers like the black shark 4 pro we also have two rear capacitive sensors at the back as well as force touch on the display the camera bump isn't really a camera bump it does slope it is quite a lot bigger than others remember it's not just housing the camera camera system but all of its internals to keep the edges of the phone nice and cool but because of that module that mountain in the middle makes for quite a big rocking effect when on a flat surface design wise it really does scream gaming compared to other gaming phones around especially when compared to the black shark 4 pro i'd even say the rog phone 5 and red magic 6 are a lot more subtle but just look how nice and sleek the black shark 4 pro looks there and of course it doesn't look anything as normal as an S21 Ultra. The back looks very unique. I must say I do quite like it, but what about the front? Well, we get a 20.5 by nine aspect ratio, 6.92. This thing is massive inch E4 AMOLED display. It is unfortunately only full HD plus. We do have a top brightness of 1300 nits and we do have 144 Hertz refresh rates and 720 Hertz touch sampling rates. The color reproduction is pretty similar to even the likes of the S21 Ultra's class leading display over there. Colors are nice, bright, vivid, and do pop to the eye when using it. And it is quite a lot brighter than other gaming phones around, such as the Red Magic 6, which is only stuck to 630 nits, where the Legion Phone 2 Pro is at 1300 nits. Bezels wise, it does have a pop-up camera, but for some reason, there are still quite a bit of bezels around the phone, even on these sides. 
I would have liked to see that pretty much gone. And it does have quite a bit of a screen to body ratio compared to phones pretty similar to it. Unfortunately, no WQHD plus display here, but we do have 144 Hertz, not the highest like we've seen on the Red Magic 6 with 165 Hertz, but it's matching other gaming smartphones and blowing regular phones like the S21 Ultra out of the water. It feels nice and smooth and fluid as you would expect, but unfortunately there is no adaptive refresh rate option here. There is only an adaptive, I guess an auto switch one which can switch between 60, 90, 120 and 144 only when gaming. Brightness level is good, it gets nice and dim and nice and bright as you would expect it. The vivid colors on the display are great and we also have different dynamic range as well as HDR enhancements and DC backlighting too. You can change a little bit of colors on the screen to get to your satisfactory needs. And we do have dark mode, the colors are nice and deep which works with all first party apps but unfortunately no third party apps. We do have an always on display, not a massive amount of customization options here, actually no customization options. And we do have an in-display optical fingerprint scanner and it works pretty snappy. It's not the physical one like you see on the Black Shark 4 Pro, which in my opinion works great. Many people do still like optical ones. Black Shark just seems to be going back to their roots and it's pretty much on par, if not quicker than all other phones around and even stacks up against the S21 Ultra's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. We do have facial recognition, though unfortunately the camera has to pop up. This was actually lacking on the Legion of Phone 1 where it actually wouldn't let you use facial recognition even though it had a pop-up selfie cam. So I'm glad they fixed it, but it does take a long time, the entire process of unlocking, swiping and getting into your phone much quicker to use the fingerprint sensor. But when I stick my face in when both phones have actually been unlocked, it's actually on par in terms of the actual facial recognition speed. It looks pretty great, but what about the sound? And it does have a retractable option when you do decide to drop your phone to protect that wonderful pop-up selfie camera, which is indeed 44 megapixels with an aperture of f 2.0, and it has a field of view of 84 degrees. It looks pretty great in terms of just raw image quality, and you can bin it down to 11 megapixels, which takes an even better shot. This is Technic recording a 4K at 60 FPS video using the selfie cam on the brand spanking new Lenovo Legion Phone 2 Pro. Yes, you hearing that right, we can get all the way up to 60 FPS at a max resolution of 4K when you're using the selfie cam on Lenovo's latest gaming smartphone. Let me know what you guys think of the video as well as the audio quality when recording using the selfie cam. And we can also use the front and back cam simultaneously to record dual video on the Legion Phone 2 Pro. But what this phone does better than other phones is that you can completely remove the background when recording with the selfie cam, so it gives it a nice little extra touch, I guess, if you're into this thing. At the back, we only have two cameras. We have a main 64 megapixel Omnivision sensor with a 7P lens and phase detection autofocus. And we have a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor, which has a field of view of 123 degrees, which looks pretty decent. The 64 megapixel looks okay. The 16 megapixel bin looks slightly better. You can also use 64 megapixel to do two times zoom. That is the max. Two times zoom with bin shot looks a bit better. I guess the max of eight times doesn't look terrible considering there was a lot of wind on this day. Getting close and personal, the colors of the subject wash out completely and the macro shot looks okay with the ultra wide sensor, I guess you could say. We do have 8K at 24 frames per second video. That is the max resolution that you can do. The max frame rate for 8K is 24 frames per second over here. It's using pretty much raw 8K footage, which is great. We also have 4K at 60 FPS, which is awesome. And like you saw earlier, you can even do 4K 60 on the front cam. 1080p 60 FPS, once again, nice and stable, though it looks a bit washed out when the sun starts to hit the lens. We have 4K 30 FPS ultra wide. And once again, when the sun hits the lens, it completely blows the colors out of the water. 1080p at 30 FPS using the dual mode over here where you can use the ultra wide sensor as well as the main and jump between 1x and 2x zoom. And when it comes to software, we have ZUI or Legion OS 12.5 skinned over Android 11. The first Legion phone received Android 11 just four months after its release, Android 11's release that is. So I'm pretty sure that we'll get a pretty snappy update on the Legion Phone 2 Pro, probably around January next year. The software is pretty stock, I guess you could say. Not really stock, it's just very simple. It's a very simple interface and you can turn things into landscape mode, which I guess they kind of forced you with the first one to use, but this one, it's mainly just all about the vertical setup. The haptics you would expect feel great, but unfortunately each one rolls into the other, giving it a very unpleasant feeling. But what about the speakers? Let's go ahead and have a listen compared to others.
Magic Man! When it comes to gaming, we do have something called Legion Realm, something brought forward from its predecessor and it's very basic, once again, not as complex as Red Magic's game space or ROG's game space, that is, with this X mode and its armory crates and all that. We can change how sensitive the top triggers are as well as all the lighting effects. We can also tweak with the fan, but not very much. And going into it, the interface, once again, looks pretty simple. This is a very simple looking phone on the inside, very savage on the outside, I guess not too stylish for some. When it comes to the game space overlay, the Lenovo Legion Realm looks pretty good. We do have an enhanced mode over here that you can switch between with the display as well as charge separation, but they like to call it bypass charging where it just uses the power from electricity, your socket in your wall, instead of the actual phone's battery to reduce heat. And you'll see a little bit later, it doesn't really seem to do that. We do have the top triggers, two on the right and two on the left, top right corner, top left corner, respectively, when in landscape. And we do have a gyroscope over there, which can be used for 4D moving your phone around, I guess, which is cool, but not very conventional. And the two triggers at the back are uncomfortable using with two fingers at a time, but using them with one finger on both is pretty okay if you can actually find them. And we do have those capacitive buttons on the back and the global version can actually use them in game. But as I've seen online, they are pretty useless when gaming. So that's probably why the Chinese market just use them for shortcuts. And they do work for shortcuts when you finally get used to them, though there aren't many shortcuts that you can actually choose from. And we do have streaming mode, but for some reason you can't record what you're streaming. You have to first start streaming and then use the inbuilt screen recorder separately, which actually uses more of your battery, of course, and more power consumption. Yo, what's up guys? This is Technic recording 1080p footage using screen recording while using streaming mode on the brand new Lenovo Legion Phone 2 Pro. Of course, this phone is all about gaming and let's give it the gaming benchmark, Genshin Impact over here with the highest possible graphics and max frames per second. The game is limited to 60 FPS, that's why we're not seeing 144 FPS on this 144 Hertz display because the game doesn't support it, not the smartphone. And we're sitting at a pretty stable 60 most of the time, sometimes fluctuating to around 50 or 51 FPS. When it comes to PUBG Mobile, we don't have a 90 FPS option. So once again, the game is capping at 60 FPS and not necessarily the phone, which can go all the way up to 144 FPS if the game can handle it, which this one cannot, though it's sitting at a solid 60 using HDR graphics, which is pretty impressive. And and we do have the force touch options over here where you can push pretty hard on one side of the screen to do one thing and push pretty hard on the other side of the screen to do another thing like I did there with reloading my gun. Next game here is Call of Duty Mobile with very high graphics and max FPS. It does have a 90 FPS mode though not on this phone yet. I have done it on the Red Magic 6 which does support 90 FPS but once again only at medium graphics so you are dipping down on graphics in terms of getting extra frames per second and this is once again sitting at a stable 60 with the best possible graphics. Bullet Force is a game with an unlimited FPS cap, so the Lenovo Legion 2 Pro is doing a great job in terms of frames per second, though it's not quite hitting 144, it's hitting around 120 or 130 FPS most of the time. It's still not too bad, I would just expect it to be a little bit higher. Another game that is usually supported by devices with such a high refresh rate is Dead Trigger 2, but once again the Legion Phone 2 Pro isn't supporting it. This is not the game, now this is definitely the phone capping it at 60 for some unknown reason over here and it's not even sitting at a solid 60 fps next game that we have is real racing 3 once again no frames per second cap you cannot adjust the graphics or fps we're sitting at around 120 130 frames per second most of the time unfortunately not quite hitting that 144 fps mark but what about benchmarks the phone is paired with a snapdragon 888 chipset run on 5 nanometer process node technology so it should be pretty efficient that's why i checked the battery level there we'll get the milliamp hour per minute reading after running three benchmarks over here that being Antutu version 9.0.5, Geekbench version 5.4,
which just released, as well as 3D Mark Wildlife. And fortunately, this time around, unlike Xiaomi devices, all benchmarks did complete and didn't crash one. But getting to the results of the battery drain, as well as the temperature in degrees Celsius, it drained by 8% with a milliamp hour per minute reading of 27.5 and a temperature jump of 20.6 degrees in Celsius, bringing it all the way up to a very hot 61.5. When it comes to Antutu version 9, it plays second quite a bit behind the Black Shark 4 Pro, pretty much on par with the ROG Phone 5, but knocked the Red Magic 6 and S21 Ultra out the park. When it comes to Geekbench version 5.4, it wasn't necessarily the best in the single core department, second from the bottom that is, but in terms of multi-core performance, it's actually better than the S21 Ultra, but once again trails behind the ROG Phone and Black Shark. However, it did a lot better in 3D Mark Wildlife with a score of 5775, an FPS count of 34.6, which matches the Black Shark 4 Pro and leaves the ROG Phone 5, Red Magic 6 and S21 Ultra trailing behind it. The Lenovo Legion Phone 2 Pro might have many things that come in pairs, but one individual thing that does stand out is its insanely unique design, which I personally love but may not sit right with others. It has some fancy RGB lights on the back, which are apparent on its twin fan system too, which in my opinion doesn't seem to cool down the phone the way it should. And between those turbo fans sits two very subpar cameras, but this is a gaming phone after all. Speaking about things that come in twos, those two ultrasonic triggers on either side are a bit uncomfortable to use once you can actually find them, and two capacitive sensors on the rear which are pretty useless. There are also two charging ports which when used together allow for 90 watt charging to fuel up its massive 5500 milliamp hour battery, but many phones these days can do 120 watt charging using just one port. We also get two front facing dual stereo speakers which are arguably the best on the market, and an optical fingerprint sensor which is nice and snappy, not to mention the impressive 44 megapixel pop-up selfie camera which doubles as a facial recognition sensor and allows you to have an uninterrupted experience on the bright and vivid 6.92 inch E4 AMOLED display, but I'm pretty sure they could have tucked that selfie cam somewhere in those thick bezels. The 144Hz refresh rate is nice and smooth, but lacks being adaptive, however it does aid the Snapdragon 888 chipset in most games. That being said, the Legion Phone 2 Pro is not exactly a premium all-round smartphone like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which has a QHD display, minimal bezels, incredible camera system, waterproofing, and wireless charging. It lacks the subtle gaming aesthetic of the Black Shark 4 Pro, which has pop-up gaming triggers by the way, and costs quite a bit less. It comes close to the ROG Phone 5 in terms of price and being able to fold in half, or should I say thirds, but lacks the ROG Phone 5's software optimizations. And not only does the Red Magic 6 also have an internal cooling fan system that actually works properly, but also has a headphone jack, slimmer bezels, identical internals, and cost a hell of a lot less money. I can't exactly recommend Lenovo's latest gaming smartphone to the majority, but I can say that if you are an intrigued gaming enthusiast, it's definitely worth looking into.